Today, we become legends. This is going to be a long one, since for some reason there needs to be 50 times more mages than any other class in Smite. If you're new to this series, check out the Warrior and Assassin videos I've made previously after this one if you need more knowledge. These tips are meant to be quick things you can implement into your games without too much thought or practice to increase your odds against the mages of Smite. If you find these tips useful, then smash that sub button to join the Nay Nation and be notified when I upload the final two entries in this series for the Guardians and Hunters. But without further ado, let's jump in. Agni. You're not safe behind walls. This is especially applicable in jungle teamfights, but also on sieges and in some other places too. Agni's bombs are a majority of his teamfight damage, with each one doing more than his two, and his three's damage being very unreliable in teamfights. So if you're scared of an Agni who can see you, you should be just as scared of one that's behind a wall, since you're still going to take a metric ton of damage and get stunned, while potentially not being able to return fire if your own abilities can't go over walls. Wards help with this too, both so that you can see Agni when he's going to bomb you, and in the case of sentry wards, so he can't see you. That way he has to come out of his hidey hole and fight you like a man, which gives you a much better chance of taking him down. Apoash. His three only stuns if you heal from abilities during the ticks. You're good to use potions, lifesteal and item healing during this time, but make sure to save any ability healing until this effect ends. This is especially true on teammates. I see a lot of healers like Hell or Afro heal their teammates without realising they have Poash 3 on them and they essentially stun their own teammates. Don't be that guy. Anubis. Anti-heal, please. If you're playing against an Anubis, anti-heal is just as important as if you're playing against a traditional healer. Anubis is a low mobility glass cannon that roots himself for half of his abilities. The only way he stays alive in teamfights is through insane lifesteal. If you rock a brawlers and divine combo on your mid jungle and any other decent anti-heal on your team, Anubis will be far easier to deal with using a simple dive from the jungler. Ao Kuang. When Ao uses his TP, the decoy will face in the direction he teleported. You can use this to track where he might have gone during his invisibility. Throwing a big AoE ability in the direction the decoy is facing, you might just catch him before he slinks away. Most decent Ao Kuang players will mix up their options from time to time though and sometimes double back on themselves to mask where they went, so you've got to read the player and see which option they choose in different scenarios to really get a feel for it, but this is a baseline thing that you can do against an Ao Kuang. Aphrodite. She's not unkillable, don't treat her like she is. As annoying as Afro's healing and immunity are, don't be afraid to commit to her. She has limited ways to deal with dives and zoning, so if you can burn those out without full committing onto her and giving her tons of value from her ult, you can then commit after the fact, and once her ult is down, she's actually one of the easiest mages in the game to run down and kill. Baba Yaga. Save your instant hard CC, such as silences or stuns, for when she starts to channel her three. There's a good one second or so before she blasts off when she has no CC immunity, just knockup immunity, and if you interrupt the cast during this windup, it actually still takes the cooldown from her, so she's just a sitting duck at that point and you can easily run her down. Baron Sandy. As the tank, you will often want to eat Baron's ult by just walking into the coffin to stop the pull and damage over time and eliminate the threat of being pulled in from your carries. As the carry yourself, make sure you're saving your jump and or CC immunity for when Baron ults, otherwise you're going to have a bad time. Changa. I don't actually have a single great tip for countering Changa, she just doesn't really work that way, so I'll give you a bunch of small ones instead. Her one actually hits in an arc from left to right, this means you can actually have a tiny bit of extra time to dodge if you're stood to her right when she's using it, so you're left if you're facing her in lane, and you're right if you're running away from her. Don't group up for the ult of course, try to force her to with a smaller commitment before using your big damage, especially if it's on a delay where she can easily press 2 in time to dodge it, like a Kraken for example. And finally, the 3 is similar to the 1 in that it's an arc, it's just 360 degrees this time, so you can actually stand to her back left to give you the most amount of time to react to her using this, and likewise if you're on her team, stand to her front left to get healed first. These are minor differences of probably less than a third of a second, but sometimes it's relevant, and I have no better tips to give for Changa really, so there you go. Kronos. His ult doesn't make him immortal. Don't be scared to all in a Kronos because he has ult. Often the time between him deciding to ult, pressing the ult and the ult winding up, you can burst him down pretty easily. Discordia. Very topical right now, you must employ social distancing against Discordia. Don't group up near your teammates, especially two carries near each other in the backline is a big no-no. Discordia thrives on grouped up enemies, both from her two causing the madness and comboing straight into her one for some insane burst, but also her ultimate spreading to multiple people once it detonates. Just keep a respectful two meter distance from your fellow carries at all times when playing against Discordia. Freya. She's very much a foot on the gas type of character. She runs people down extremely fast in that 6 second window when she has the two steroids going, but once those run out and go on cooldown, she's a sitting duck for 5 seconds or so before she gets those cooldowns back. 
making her very easy to dive since her only safety is banish outside of using her ultimate to retreat, which has issues in itself because it's very easy to wait out and kill her as she comes down. So if you see Freya use her steroids, once they go on cooldown, she's very easy to kill. Hades. Don't stand in minion waves ever. This goes for whatever lane they are running Hades in, as well as in team fights if they happen around waves or camps. Hades burst comes entirely from his three, and if you're the only target for him to hit with it, he deals and heals way less. Also, save your movement ability for his ultimate, of course, otherwise he just follows you with his dash and ults you for a free kill. Hebo. And Chile actually works really well against Hebo. He often walks or blinks into a fight, threes and ults someone for a free kill. The Anchile silences him after using the three, meaning it has no real follow-up at that point, and it's pretty easy to nuke him down since he's Hebo and he's very squishy with few ways to get out. Hell. I hate to just say buy and to heal and dive her, but honestly, that's the best and only way to counter hell. She has very limited safety options once you exhaust her cleanse and any peel her support has. She's very easy to lock down and kill with a dive from solo and or jungle, especially if your mid can apply divine ruin from range as well. Pressuring her early on is another good way to shut her down and end the game before she even gets to the point where she becomes a problem. Early jungle ganks and support rotations could help with this, as well as invading her red to hurt her wave clear and potential to fight early on in the game. Hera. Focus Argus. Don't just let him wail on you while you try to kill Hera herself. She has a good amount of self peel between her 3 and her 2 and would often survive a while before you can kill her and I see tons of people just eating hit after hit from Argus while tunnel visioning Hera and dying for it, when Argus himself really isn't that tanky and can be dealt with relatively easily. Isis. Expect to lose early game wave clear in mid. This goes for both mid laners and junglers. It might not be a good idea to blink the mid camp wall at level 2 against her because she's probably one clear against your mid laner. And probably you won't be invading her either. Also, be mindful of objectives and ward up against the goddess of magic. She can burst down and secure objectives insanely well with her ultimate at full charge, so be careful when those gold furies start spawning. Yanis. Don't hug walls if Yanis is around in a team fight. Oftentimes, Yanis will initiate by ulting through a wall straight into his two for a one shot. If you're playing away from walls, it gives you that split second of time to react as you see the ult coming through or it gets called by your teammates, instead of hugging the wall and having no time to get out of the way of the truck that's about to hit you. Kukul Khan. His ultimate hits behind him. Whether this should or should not be the case is not my point. It does hit behind him and you have to play around this. If you're chasing him and hear that audio cue of him starting to ult, take a step back or to the side to dodge the ult and re-engage on him afterwards. Merlin. You have to burst him down. Merlin has some of the highest total damage in his kit of any god in the game, and if you give him 30 seconds in a team fight to just rotate stances and vomit abilities on your team, he'll win the fight on his own. Don't fight into his strengths. Fight into his weaknesses and play on your terms. He's also a very strong objective burner, but a very weak objective securer, so keep that in mind if you have a more bursty mage in mid that can abuse that. Nox. When you see or hear her 2 go down, try to reverse your direction unpredictably so she misses the 1. If Nox misses either part of her combo, she's pretty bad, so by duking around she will either miss the 1 and you get out for free, or she'll take too much time trying to line it up, at which point you get out of the silence and she only does a bit of damage and roots you. Nuar. There's actually a small circle on the ground when Nuar ults that shows where she currently is in the sky. You can use this to track her as she comes down from the ult to CC and lock her down before she can get any of her self peel off like the minion summon into a stun combo or any of her relics. A lot of Nuars will ult for safety in fights so being able to find exactly where she's going to land and punish them effectively is a great way to shut her down. Oleron. You can block his main wave clear by standing in front of the wave and taking the damage yourself in order to protect your own wave. This is most applicable in duo lane for the support to tank the hit in order to gain a clear advantage and hit level 2 early, but this can be applicable in mid lane too in certain situations. Persephone. Try to continually force the fight to move around. Create space with your front line and if you see her trying to set up a substantial amount of plants, try to force the fight in a different direction. While a lot of power comes from her ult, her plants are definitely a huge part of her kit and if you make it awkward for her to set them up effectively, then you really hamper her ability to fight. Poseidon. A little thing I like to do against Poss is actually bait him into krakening me if I have a way to negate it ready to go. So Aegis, Beads and my jump, Capriol, whatever it is. But if you bait him into krakening you by stepping a bit out of position, and I'm talking a bit out of position here, don't run into their entire team because they'll just follow up on you after your Aegis or dash and kill you anyway. But if you can bait him into using it in a position where you won't die to follow up from his team, then he's a very easy kill. Poss has a hard time doing much once he uses Kraken in a fight and making him waste it can easily lead to a team fight win. It's often worth burning your relic to make their enemy mid laner almost useless in the fight. Ra. Don't let the enemy disengage. Ra healing is a very interesting style of heal that is often not very useful in the fight because of the amount of movement that goes on, but if you can fully disengage and group up for a Ra heal then re-engage, it's incredibly powerful. 
So if the enemy team has a RAR, you want to either full commit and not let them run under any circumstances, or fully disengage yourself and don't let them re-engage onto you after the fight, because you'll probably lose unless you have your own healer. Raijin. He has some serious vulnerability frames on his dash startup that you can exploit with a quick CC like Nox 2 for example to cancel his dash and burst him down. I'm sure a lot of you already knew this one, but it's the best tip I can give if you're looking to counter Raijin. Scylla. Scylla does have an escape, but it's one of those escapes that can be exploited by the right god on the right player. Similar to Raijin actually, there's a small delay between the Scylla player deciding they want out of that fight, then summoning the dog, then starting the teleport. And while it is a small window, some CCs can catch her before she teleports. Additionally, you can see exactly where she's going to go, so you can easily follow up with your own movement or big damage ability exactly where she's going to be. Sol. If you're a melee god, don't just chase Sol when she activates her 3. The trail she leaves behind does a massive amount of damage if you chase her down through it, and I constantly see people taking upwards of 600 from this when they're a melee god auto-attacking her down. Either let her escape a little and follow with blink or your dash, or just take the damage loss for now and follow her without trying to get your damage off. Sometimes it is worth it to still chase even into the damage in the case where she's like very low for example and you can easily get the kill, but be careful with this one. Her 3 does more damage than most people think. The Morrigan. So Morrigan basically comes in two parts, the assassin burst and the ult. With the ult, there's not much you can really do about it. You just react at the time in the best way possible and look for patterns in the Morrigan's behavior to guess what they'll likely ult into in a certain situation. But you can counter the assassin aspect of her by using wards, staying close to your team and saving relics where you can. If you take away Mori's stealth aspects, then she really only has the ult to secure kills, which puts her in a much worse spot. Thoth. So my Thoth tip is less about countering the god and more about countering the players. Thoth players constantly aggro dash to get that root and damage off, and if he uses it, he's completely vulnerable, without even a CC immune ultimate or secondary CC to peel you off him. What's more, his 2 when it hits a target makes a very distinct and loud sound, so if you hear that sound, you know his dash is down and he's vulnerable for at least 12 seconds, potentially as long as 16 seconds, which gives you a great opportunity to chase him down and punish him. Vulcan. This one is similar to the Sol one, if you're a melee god chasing down a Vulcan, be very wary of being in melee range as most good Vulcan players know to self peel with a magma bomb on top of themselves, which can ruin your opportunity to burst him down. So be ready to dodge this self bomb when it comes, also if you think it's coming you may want to avoid auto attacking since that slows you down significantly and can be the difference between walking out of the radius in time and getting hit. Zeus. Just dive him. You might want to be careful for his ult if you're a melee character, but Zeus is at his best when people are scared of him, and at his worst when the entire enemy team don't give a shit and just dive him for free. The god has no mobility or defense to speak of, he can't even CC you off to self peel, so unless he has some major peel from his team, you can usually send the jungle and solo to his neighborhood and evict that son of a bitch. Jean-Cui. So the main way to counter Jean is to reduce the value his ultimate brings to a team fight. It's a huge part of his team fighting capability, and stopping it can be game winning. There's a few ways you can play around this, the most simple one of course being to save your movement ability until he ults. You can also use a hard CC like a stone, root or banish to stop him getting in range of you, though it's worth noting that knockups won't affect him during the ult channel, he has full knockup immunity. And by far the best but most niche counter to Zhong is Nejar, Haim and King Arthur's ultimates and other abilities like them. These three specifically are the best because they're extremely long duration and will often counteract his entire ultimate if you use them as soon as he pops it. But I did want to mention those other more applicable ways to counter him since most casual players can't directly counter pick Zhong since there's no draft pick option in casual game modes. But that's about it for this one. If you enjoyed or learned something from this one then definitely subscribe for more guides and videos like this one three times a week on the channel. The Guardian and Hunter tips video should be coming pretty soon. Leave your other tips that I didn't mention down below and I'll catch you guys later. Have a great day and peace out you nerds.